you are welcome to today's video lesson in today's lesson i'll be answering various revision question in the subject called biology and this question cut across various topics in biology so let's get into the first question and the question says the presence of lipids can be tested by the addition of millions reagents burette reagents sudan 3 test and the lucas reagent now it must be noted to test for the presence of lipids we simply use a reagent or a test and it is called the sudan 3 test this must be noted to indicate the presence of lipids we simply use the sudan 3 test and for we to know that lipid is actually present in the sudan 3 test it will give us a black precipitate this must be noted a black precipitate will be seen to test for the presence of lipid in the sudan 3 test and it must be noted that lipids is also regarded to be called fat and oil and fat and oil is simply a class of food now for the millos reagent and the burette reagent both reagent is used to test for the presence of proteins this must be noted both of the reagent is used to test for the presence of proteins and you know protein is also a class of food now moving over to the lucas reagent you know lucas reagent is actually used to test for the presence of alcohol and we already know that alcohol is a group of organic compound so that is for that so moving over to the next question which is question two and it says the enzyme amylase acts on now it must be noted that the enzyme called amylase act on carbohydrates now when we classify enzymes based on the food they act on it is divided into three we have amylase we have protease and we have lipase now amylase acts on carbohydrates protease acts on proteins and fat and oil which is basically also regarded to be called lipid there's an enzyme or a group of enzymes that act on them and it's called lipase this must be noted now moving over to the next question which is question three and it says which of the following is not a fat soluble vitamin now it must be noted that for the fat soluble vitamin it consists of vitamin a vitamin d vitamin e and vitamin k which is regarded to be called adec now you can see here that all the options here i can see vitamin a i can see vitamin k and i can see vitamin d and basically they are all fat soluble vitamins so which of the vitamin here will not be fat soluble vitamin is basically vitamin b1 and you know this vitamin b1 belong to a group of vitamin which is called the water soluble vitamin and water soluble vitamin consists of vitamin b's and c this must be noted so we have various vitamin b complexes and this is one of them which is called vitamin b1 and it has this chemical name to be called thiamine i did not say it's called thiamine okay i said it's called thiamine this must be noted you know thiamine is a nitrogenous base seen in the dna molecule but thiamine is simply regarded to be called vitamin b1 and when this vitamin is deficient it leads to what we call berry berry which has to do with the weakness of the muscles so all of these must be noted now moving over to the question four which is the enzymes that break down sugar cane is basically called invertase it must be noted that the enzyme that breaks down sugar cane is called invertase yes and you know there is a special disaturide in which the sugar cane can be seen and it's called sucrose yes sucrose is a disaturide why is it a disaturide it is made up of two monosaturide moieties and uh, when we break down sucrose we get two monosaturide moieties and basically the first of them is called glucose 
And after glucose, we have what we call fructose. This must be noted. You know, you know, the enzyme that break down this sugar cane is basically called inverted. So for sucrose to be broken down into glucose and fructose, we need an enzyme called inverted. It can be maltase because maltase we act in malt sugar, whereby uh, inverted we act on this, which is basically called the sugar cane or cane sugar, which uh, a special dietary is in, which is called the sucrose. So all of these must be noted. So let us quickly move over to the next question. Now let's quickly move over to the next question, which is question five, and it says the instrument that is used to measure the following is so the first. Of now, all of these written on the board, they are regarded to be called abiotic components because abiotic component, when combined with the biotic component, this form what we call the ecosystem. And the ecosystem is simply a self supporting system or a self perpetuating system that connects these two uh, components, which is biotic. And the abiotic component so but in this context we are talking about the abiotic component which is the non-living component now what are the instruments used to measure all of these now for rainfall it is simply measured by an instrument called the rain gauge this must be noted so what is the instrument used to measure temperature it is called the thermometer now this must be noted what is the instrument used to measure light it is called photometer now, what is the instrument used to measure the wind speed? It is called anemometer. Okay, this is the instrument used to measure wind speed. But what is the instrument used to measure wind direction? It is basically called wind vane. This must be noted. Now, what is the instrument used to measure liquid pressure and atmospheric pressure? They are both different forms of pressure. Now, liquid pressure is measured by an instrument called the manometer, whereby atmospheric pressure, the pressure of the atmosphere, is measured by an instrument called the barometer. Now, moving further, the instrument used to measure turbidity is basically called the Secchi Dix. Okay, this is the instrument. Meanwhile, for the instrument used to catch small insects, is called the porter. Now, all of these must be noted. Now. The instrument that is used to measure relative humidity, this is called hygrometer. Okay, for relative humidity, it's called hygrometer. But the instrument used to measure water is called hydrometer. You can see the difference. Both are different. So all of these must be noted. All of these mentioned, they are all abiotic components. Okay? And when abiotic component combined with the biotic component, they form a type of system called the ecosystem, which is a supporting system, a self-supporting system, or a self-perpetuating system. So all of these must be noted. So let's quickly move over to the next question, which is question six. And it says, plants that grows in desert or very dry areas are basically called zero fight. Yes, they are basically called zero fight. Yes. These are plants that grows in dry environments, okay, like likes of desert, and they are called xerophyte. A good example is the cactus opuntia, even uh, the aloe vera, they are all good examples of the xerophyte. Now, for epiphytes, epiphytes are plants that basically grow on top of another plant, and a good example is the fern. And also, for hydrophyte, they are, they are plants that, that lives in places where there's sufficient supply of water and for mesophyte there's adequately uh, supply of water for mesophyte and a good example is uh, uh the yam the yam is a good example of a mesophyte so all of these must be noted now for the question seven it says the pathogen that causes the following diseases are for typhoid fever there's a pathogen that causes typhoid fever and what's it called it's called salmonella salmonella typhi this is the pathogen that causes typhoid fever now for bacterial dysentery that's the dysentery there's a pathogen that causes it and it's called shigella dysentery okay shigella dysentery now what's the pathogen that causes cholera it's called vibro cholerae now for the pathogen that causes tetanus it's called uh 
clostridium tentani. For the pathogen that causes tuberculosis, is called mycobacterium tuberculosis. Now, for the pathogen that causes uh, uh, mal uh, uh, malaria, also regarded to be called plasmodiasis, very, very common, is called plasmodium. But we have various species of plasmodium. We have the likes of Plasmodium valsiparum, which is the most active form of Plasmodium. We have the likes of Plasmodium vivax. Okay, we have the likes of Plasmodium uh, nolese. We have the likes of Plasmodium malarial. We have the likes of Plasmodium ovuli. So all of these are the, the forms of Plasmodium. But the one that is mostly active is called Plasmodium valsiparum. Now, for amoebic dysentery, this is another form of dysentery because the first one was bacterial dysentery. This is amoebic dysentery, and this is caused by a form of amoeba which is called entamoeba, entamoeba histolytica. Okay, entamoeba histolytica. You know, this is the, is a parasitic type of amoeba. We have other free living amoeba like Lexo like, Amoeba gigivalis. Now, let us quickly move over to the next question, which is question eight. And it says, the part of the brain, also called the little brain, is called the cerebellum. This must be noted, you know, the cerebellum is found in the hind part of the brain you know the brain is of three regions we have the forebrain we have the the midbrain and we have the hind brain now for the forebrain we have the cerebrum the thalamus and the hypothalamus while for the for the hind brain we have the cerebellum and we have the mandula obliganta okay now the cerebellum is also regarded to be called the little brain now this must be noted now for the next question which is question nine it says the largest and the most dominant part of the brain is basically called the cerebrum okay this is the largest and the most dominant part of the brain it controls intelligence it controls consciousness it controls a lot of things that has to do with intelligence okay it controls judgment let us quickly move over to the next question which is question 10. now question 10 says the fiber band that connect the two halves of the cerebrum is called the corpus callosum this must be noted. The fiber band that separates the two halves of the, the, the cerebrum is called the corpus callosum. Now, moving over to question 11, which is the last question, and it says, the fluid that acts as a protective cushion in the spinal cord is called, is called the CSF fluid, which is called the cerebral, okay, spina, fluid so the fluid in the spinal cord is called the cerebral spinal fluid and it serves as a protective cushion okay in the spinal cord you know now you know the, the nervous system is of two we have the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system the central nervous system is divided into the brain okay and the spinal cord and this spinal cord basically controls involuntary actions or reflex action not only the spinal cord controls it though even the mandula obliganta controls it. Uh, as I earlier said, the mandula obliganta and the cerebellum are found in the hind brain. So all of these must be noted. So if you find this video helpful, do want to click the subscribe button and also share these videos to friends. Thanks for watching.